Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and as usual I'll start with some announcements and the first one is that in just a few weeks, I think March 8th is the date of the first class, I'm teaching a weight loss certification course and um, we have some new ideas to share. I think that uh, it's important to realize that 99.8% of obesity reduction programs don't work. The failure rate's 99.8%. And I think with a failure rate like that, we have to start um, blaming ourselves, the healthcare profession, not blaming the people who keep signing up for these programs and they don't work, and looking for some other options. So we do have some new ideas to share, and uh, we've had some success with some of those ideas, and I'm anxious to share them with you. And then, Herbal Medicine starts this week at the Wellness Form Institute. You don't have to sign up for the whole program that we offer through the Institute. You can take individual courses. So if this is something you've always wanted to learn about, let us know. And I saved the best for last, which is that the conversion of our website, uh, the primary website, wellnessformhealth.com, is finished. It's stocked with information. You can go to wellnessformhealth.com and look around. We're very proud of it. Um, almost all of our passcode sites are um, being reactivated. This was an enormous move, as you might, might imagine. We really appreciate those of you who um, are regular visitors to our website and subscribe to some of our programming. We really appreciate your patience. Um, I've always said that making the types of changes we're making right now at Wellness Form Health, it would be so much easier if we were a startup business than if we were um, doing all these things as we are with a long time, 20 year old business that has a lot of data and a lot of clients and all that sort of thing. So thanks for your patience, but do go visit it and send me an email and tell me what you think about what you see. All right. We're going to talk about kids today and um, the first study that I'm going to talk about actually made me extraordinarily surprised. I almost fell off my chair when I read this. So I'll just start by saying I think we can all agree that the obesity problems in children are concerning. Um, there aren't any simple answers for what has taken a long time and a lot of factors to create. And one major impediment to progress is we have so many different people with different ideas about the way to solve this, different ideas about nutrition and, and children's health and welfare. I've always thought that there are a few things about which we all agree and if we would just start with one of those or two of those we could at least get down the path to making things better and one of them is just encouraging children to drink more water instead of drinking so many calorie laden beverages. I don't meet many people who don't think that's a good idea, except of course the people who make the high calorie beverages. They do not think that this is a good idea for obvious reasons. Well, a recent study of New York City school children showed that increasing water intake does displace high calorie drinks and it does result in a small but significant drop in BMI. The study included over 1,200 New York City public elementary and middle schools with over a million students. And what they did was install water jets or dispensers in 483 of the schools. The jets, which cost about $1,000 each, chill and oxygenate tap water and the children just access it by pressing a lever. The researchers designed the study for a, with a couple of things in mind, one of which was to see if drinking more water and reducing milk purchases, interestingly enough, would be effective for weight loss. That's the part that surprised me. It is pretty much forbidden to talk about lessening milk intake in schools. Well, in schools that got the water jets, both elementary and middle school, boys and girls, showed drops in BMI. The schools with water jets also showed fewer boys and girls progressing to overweight status during the time that they were there. The researchers attributed the change to both the increases in water intake and decreases in higher calorie beverage intake, including milk. There was a significant 12.3% drop in the intake of all types of milk products purchased and consumed by students at schools that had the water jets. The researchers wrote, quote, water jets could be an important part of the toolkit for obesity reduction techniques at the school setting. They noted the low cost of the water jets and suggested that more research should look at several mechanisms for weight loss, including milk drinking for children. The study was conducted by New York University Langone, Langone, or I don't know how to pronounce that anyway, Medical Center. It was published in JAMA Pediatrics 
And again, I'll express my shock um, and pleasure <laughs> and, and surprise in a good way that this study was actually conducted and published because milk is so aggressively promoted in the school setting and the dairy industry is understandably very resistant to any kind of change that would interfere with this very lucrative distribution system. So maybe this is the beginning of getting industry out of our schools and instead helping children to adopt healthier habits as part part of their uh, education. We can only hope, right? Well, while we're on the topic of children, we learn more about the importance of the hundred plus trillion bacteria that constitute the gut microbiome every single day. From birth, humans count on these bacteria to develop a highly functioning immune system, to create an effective barrier between the gastrointestinal tract and the bloodstream, and to facilitate the absorption of nutrients from food. In addition to contributing over 5 million additional genes to our genetic makeup, these bacteria help to ensure the development of our neural and metabolic systems. It's well established that diet plays a major role in the development and maintenance of a healthy microbiome, but research now shows that exercise plays a role too. A new review shows that early life exercise results in changes to the gut microbiota, which can contribute to optimal brain function and emotional well-being. The authors report that early childhood exercise may even protect against psychiatric stress disorders later in life. The protective effect is attributed to increased colonies of lactobacillus and other types of bacteria that, produ that produce butyrate, a short-chain fatty acid that has been shown to reduce mucosal inflammation, strengthen the intestinal barrier, and improve intestinal motility. Butyrate has also been shown to assist in preventing colon cancer. Lots of benefits to having a healthy gut microbiome. The effects of butyrate are not limited to the intestines. It also plays a role in reducing the risk of insulin resistance and ischemic stroke. According to the researchers, increases in these bacteria as a result of early childhood exercise are greater than when exercise is started in adulthood. And I think we could probably also insert here that the more uh, that the earlier children start to exercise and the earlier that habit is formed and made part of um, their normal daily life, the more likely they would be to continue exercising in adulthood. We suggest that early life exercise induced changes in mood and metabolism enhancing bacteria are potentially mechanistically involved in the persistent health benefits of exercise throughout this sensitive time, the authors wrote. Now, I'm often asked why children today seem to be so susceptible to illness, and they are compared to children 40 to 50 years ago. Uh, when my sister and I were kids, and granted I'm a lot older now, but when we were kids we just didn't miss that much school because we were sick and kids seem to be sick all the time. Well, there are a lot of reasons, but two of the most important are diet and physical activity. I mean, most kids are eating a diet that promotes the growth of uh, pathogenic bacteria, uh, does not promote the growth of beneficial bacteria. The overprescribing of antibiotics has made all of this even worse because antibiotics wipe out gut bacteria. And then children are not physically active. They're learning how to be sedentary rather than learning how to be physically active at an early age. So I think if we want to improve children's health, we have to pay attention to their diet, exercise, um, becoming much more conservative about how much antibiotic we use in a medical setting. And we could set kids up for a much healthier adulthood. Okay, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you on Thursday with more news.